The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you. You revealed to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured. Mercifully deliver us from the darkness of this world and change us into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yes, I know, keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes, I know, be silent. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. 50 men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other 
until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see them, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. I desire mercy more than sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. I desire mercy more than sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. The Lord, the God of God has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty. God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers. Those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause. For God himself is judge. I desire mercy more than sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus Christ. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who is shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Right to 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The theme of light weaves its way through the season of Epiphany. Light growing as we leave the winter solstice behind. The light of the star which leads the Magi. The light of the candles we bless at Candlemas. The light to lighten the Gentiles held in the arms of aged Simeon. Finally, with the season drawing to a close and Lent approaching, Today's gospel shows us the ultimate, uncreated radiance, the outward manifestation of the glory of God. Six days after telling his uncomprehending disciples of the passion and suffering to come and reproaching Peter for trying to put himself in the way of his messianic mission, Jesus takes the three who in Mark's gospel usually constitute his inner circle to a mountaintop where they are shown a vision of him in the full glory of his divine nature, dazzling and remote. Accompanying him suddenly are Moses and Elijah, two great figures of Jewish tradition. There is something, I think, which the Gospel of Mark does more effectively than the others. It immerses us in the incomprehension of the disciples. Even though we know how the story goes on, Mark's gospel takes us right back into the confusion of Peter and the others about the significance of the events which seem to be picking them up and carrying them along. Mark's account of the transfiguration is a prime example of this. The three chosen disciples probably expected some kind of confidential instruction, some practical insight into the events which were to come in the days ahead. And instead, they saw Jesus in a way they had never seen him before. They were terrified. In fact, the Orthodox icon of the Transfiguration shows them 
either cowering in awe or, in many versions of the image, actually falling backward down the mountain in their fear and amazement. Peters stammered out something about honoring Jesus, Elijah, and Moses by erecting some sort of tents or booths, as if they could somehow dwell permanently in the glory of that moment. The only answer he got was a voice from God saying, This is my son, listen to him. But what does Jesus tell them when the vision has faded? Keep this to yourselves for the time being. After his resurrection, they will remember and begin to understand, and then they will be able to share what they have seen. Of course, our lectionary heightens the effect of the disciples' confusion by giving us the story of Elisha as a contrast. Elijah doesn't invite Elisha to come with him. In fact, he tries to send him back. But Elisha is the initiator. He seems to know exactly what's going on. He asks for a double portion of Elijah's spirit, and he has witnesses who can confirm him as Elijah's designated successor. Peter, James, and John have only their shared recollections and their shared astonishment at the dazzling light which came and then faded away. Their lives cannot yet be fully transformed. There must be a time of waiting. We and the whole world have been experiencing a year of waiting for answers, for a vaccine, for healing, for justice. In the season of Christmas and Epiphany, we have sought hope and comfort in the full and simple glories of the Incarnation. Now, as we enter into a different, more deliberate season of waiting, we must step back for a time. Like those first disciples, we cannot jump directly to Easter, but need a time of transition a time when we learn the costs of discipleship. It is fitting that we follow the transfiguration of Christ with a small disfigurement of ourselves, the sign of ashes. We mark ourselves with the leavings of fire, what remains after light and heat have gone, no longer energy but bare matter. We come down from the mountaintop and follow Jesus into the small places, the mad and broken and hungry places, to learn what he does, how gently he deals with hearts suspended between belief and unbelief, how love acts in the world. We hold the glory in our hearts for strength, and for comfort, and to remind one another of what has been and what is to come. And in time, we come to recognize that the icon of the transfiguration and the icon of the crucifixion are the same form, as intimately related as the positive and negative images of a photograph, Moses and Elijah replaced by two thieves, fellow criminals with Jesus in the eyes of the powerful. The glory of the transfiguration, the Shekinah of the living God, shines through the cross, although the eyes of the body cannot see it. Together, we make this discovery afresh every year, as a sign that our growth into the life of God is a process which never stops that we are always being called to transformation, each of us in ourselves and together as the body of Christ. Paul writes to the Corinthians, it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And we are called to be that light for one another. 
as Peter and James and John needed one another's memories of what had happened on the mountaintop and witnessed together to the rest of their community and to us, so we are called to strengthen one another in the good news when it is hard to remember or believe and to witness to our own experience of the presence of God as we seek to bring the light of transformation into the dark, cold places of the world. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered the death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us offer prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Lord who guides us and guards us, for all people everywhere according to their needs. We pray for every one of us who calls ourselves a Christian, that we may go forward in unity and strength. Guide us with your light as we go through the challenges of all that is unknown to us, strong in the knowledge that Jesus Christ is with us. Let us pray then at this time for the leaders of our church, the Reverend Andrea, the Reverend Carol, for our bishops, Kevin, Anne, and Linda, for the users of this space, including Father Nestor and our sisters and brothers of St. Seraphim of Sarov, the Movement of Truth Mission, the 18th Willowdale Scout Group and Willowdale Early On Child and Family Center. Let us pray for the refugee families that we are helping to support through the DVRR. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Lord of fellowship among all people. We pray for our companion diocese of Grahamstown, South Africa, and for our own in the Anglican Church of Canada. We pray for our own parish, especially for Andy, Sandy, Billy, and Janet. We pray for those who cannot be with us at regular worship and for those shut in Eileen, Elsie, Gloria, Jean, Louise, Olive, and Sylvia, the residents of Sunrise of Thornhill. We pray for families, friends, and neighbors of our own parish, upholding those who have requested our prayers as listed in the bulletin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Lord of all power and justice. We pray for the leaders of the world and all in authority under them. We pray for the leaders of our own country, its provinces and its cities at this time of a pandemic and health crisis. For those with the coronavirus, for those who care for them, for those who are suffering from anxiety during this stressful time as uncertainty still clouds the future. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for areas of the world concurrently impacted by climate change and threats to the global economy. We pray for those who lack food, shelter, and employment. We pray for all persecuted persons all over the world Mercy for the children imprisoned in the U.S. We pray for prisoners of conscience of all faiths and for all victims of abuse. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Lord who comforts us and strengthens us. For all those who have suffered recent bereavement, especially the loved ones and family members, of Carlton Williams and the Reverend Godfrey Bethel who have entered your eternal presence. Let us also give thanks to the Lord of praise for the many blessings we have received. We uphold those who celebrate births and birthdays, other joyful events and anniversaries during this week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are generous and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, 
God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to the table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.